intended to do with the Hyperloop was really to, to spur interest in new forms of transportation. Um, and I think, I, I'm, I'm starting to think this is really gonna, gonna happen. So, yeah. Um, and I think uh, you guys are gonna bring it to him. So, congratulations. Yeah. We have two camps. We have maglev and we have air bearings. Which one do you prefer? Still the air bearings or do you go with maglev? Uh, okay, that's a, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, the <clears throat> when you consider the system as a whole, you, you, I, I really, uh, what, what matters is the, the whatever the end thing is built that people actually use, um, it, the, the, the cost and the reliability and the utility uh, have to be really as good as possible. So, uh, you know, really the, the fundamental physics and economics uh, should drive the, the true solution. And I'm, I'm not sure we know what that, that is uh, yet. And that's really what we're doing here. This is a journey of discovery to say, what, what is the right solution? Um, and um, I mean, I, the, the, there, is, uh, there is also the wheels camp. Um, I should mention, but... <laughs> but um, I, and, and there's... there's I, I actually think it sort of depends on um, if you have a lot of twists and turns in the track, and you're and you essentially are l limited in on, on G's, um, then then wheels would actually make the most sense for such a track. Um, if you have a really straight shot, and you can you can you know you can go really a lot really long straightaway, um, then you may exceed the, the the speed that wheels can really handle. So overheat the wheels or um, have them not function very well. So, so, so I think I think actually for for windy tr windy tracks it would be probably be wheels, and then it's uh, it's sort of up in the air as to what it would be for a longer range track where you really try to push the limit. Um, so, if you had to change anything in the document, <coughs> what would you change? If I had to change anything in the document, um, well, I, I guess I would probably. It, like if somebody were, was going to build uh, a working hyperloop, like, um, and try, try to make it work, I would, I, I would advocate s starting with the simplest useful system. Um, so, I'd probably advocate um, wheels, and uh, and, <laughs> and and then you can sort of say, okay, it's working. Essentially, if you're if you're trying to create a company, uh, it's important to uh, limit the number of miracles in series, um, <laughs> and and so you want to you want to start off with uh, something that's that's the most doable, and then and then expand from there. Um, you know, at SpaceX we started off with at the, what we thought was the smallest useful orbital rocket, uh, doing about a, roughly a thousand pounds to orbit, um, and it's a good thing we did that because in the beginning we really didn't know what we were doing. Um, and, and the first three rockets didn't work. Um, and if, if we tried to do something much bigger or more complicated, then we probably would have run out of money and died. So and we barely made it as it is. So th that in general, I think, is uh, good advice for people creating a company. Make, start with the, the minimally useful system. Th something that you think is still compelling, but, um, but, but then leave future technologies for future upgrades. <laughs>